graduation, not for war and occupation. Celebrate graduation, not for war and occupation. Do people have died? Do you want to know anything or do you just No, I've asked something you don't understand. You go crazy. Okay. The truth of the matter is the U.S. tortured people. The U.S. tortured people. You're not listening because you don't want to know. I do know. The U.S. The U.S. prosecuted, prosecuted after World War II, the Japanese okay. were carrying out the water torture. Okay. 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 Water torture. They were waterboarded to protect the executed people. No, water torture. No, water waterboarding is waterboarding. Drowning. No, waterboarding is waterboarding. Is you cannot die in waterboarding. It induces fear. It induces fear. Because you believe you are dying. Because you believe you are dying. There's mental damage. Yes, I agree. The mental damage. Water is filling your lungs. It, when you are being waterboarded, water is filling your lungs. What do you mean by waterboarding? Okay, put, I know what waterboarding is. Hang upside down and put cloth in your face, pour water over you. And it gives your mind the sensation of drowning without actually water drowning. Water is going into your that, body. That's torture. <laughs> that is Giving torture. Giving your mind the sensation that you're drowning yeah, is torture. Yeah, I don't think it's really that. I mean, yes. I see, I've, I've seen people. I've talk shows who just said the I've same seen. thing you did, and they put him on a waterboard table, yeah, and he lasted three that. seconds. I know who you're talking about. And he got up and he said, dude, It was the worst thing ever. Waterboarding is torture. But did he die? Did he die? It doesn't matter whether he died. It's torture. But you're supporting You're protecting the freedom of the U.S. The, 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 so whoa, when you're saying whoa, anything, whoa, as long as you're a bit, you, you have the ability to go about your own life and do whatever you want, so I don't give a fuck what they do to That is the way it's great to do this by the U.S. that I have the opinion of self-purpose. It's not about that opinion, it's so about the right and what they are. To accept oh, yeah. any kind of crime and to say nothing about it. That's well, the right you have as an American. As, yeah, it's right right freedom of choice. How many it's freedom of choice. Fuck yeah. What about the okay. right. right. for people right. who have been tortured? Right. What about them? They're, they're, not, they're not American citizens. In this country, oh, you have the right to say, say what the Here's a guy who says that waterboarding is a good thing. Here's a guy that no, no, says no, no, no. we should torture See, this people. This is some leftist bullshit. Oh, this yeah, is a guy. You just said that. I did not you say it's a good thing. You just said we should torture people. Is it torture or not? Is it wrong? I did not. If we should torture little children. I did not say. You're either for torture or you're against it. In order to protect the freedoms of America. I think you know what he said? He said yes. He Fuck said we right, should torture it? little children Fuck yeah, in order to, to be guaranteed the rights really as Americans. Like, like, well, here's my question to you. What makes you different than a Nazi? Yeah. What makes you any different than those what people? Because in Nazi Asia? Germany, they said the same thing. They, well, they said we're that. preserving our well, rights as Germans. And these dirty Jews need to be you prosecuted and given no, no. and taken you? to the death camps. That's what they did, and the logic is exactly the same. The, no, no, you look at Germany as the point of exposure. You're a point of exposure. Look at Germany as the point of exposure. Okay, so this is the thing people need to decide. People need to decide if you accept torture. I'm actually little children and everything else like, in you? the name of America but, and his rights. Okay, you guys don't actually listen. That's what they're doing. People got a responsibility when your government tortures people to speak out. And no, it's not just a question of whether it works. It's illegitimate and it's immoral to torture people. Whoever the fuck it is. And I'm saying that word right here. I don't say it all the time when I'm agitated, but I'm saying it now. It's your responsibility to speak out when your government tortures people. And this is the kind of stuff that Robert Gates is doing, that George Bush did, and all these people, and that Obama is basically supporting and covering up by refusing to prosecute these people, by refusing to release pictures of torture. This is exactly the question. What will you do or not do in the name of protecting your safety? Because the truth of the matter is, what that means is if you will accept anything like torture, you'll accept any crime in the face of the planet. Torture is a war crime. Torture is like rape. Would you say that? Well, yeah, I'll support rape if it's, if it's order, in order to guarantee the freedom of Americans. Would you say that? It's no different around torture. Don't tell yourself that it's anything else. People in the back there are under attack. What do we do? Stand down, fight back. The people who have been under attack. What do we do? Stand down, fight back. The people in the world are under attack. What do we do? Stand down, fight back. But the people of Iraq are under attack. What do we do? Stand down, fight back. What do we do? Stand down, fight back. What do we do? Stand down, fight back. The people in the world are under attack. What do we do? Stand down, fight back. What do we do? Stand down, fight back. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. When homeless people are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back.
graduate, graduating in the Jackson School of Political Science Department. I, like my colleagues here, my uh, fellow graduates, were uh, vehemently opposed to Robert Gates speaking here at the university commencement. We think it represents an increased militarization of our campus. Why is it that someone who has raised the military defense spending by 4% nationally is allowed to speak here at the university while public education is getting cut here at the university. There's going to be a 28% tuition hike for undergraduates over the next two years. Why is it that we people, we students, we ordinary workers from below are getting cut while there's increased military spending? We're, we're continuing the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the occupation in, in, in Palestine. This is very immoral. The University of Washington claims to be a very diverse place, claims to be open to students of color, but with this increased tuition heights, less students of color will afford and access this university. So this is morally uh, reprehensible. We are here to oppose that. We are here to oppose Robert Gates speaking here. Um, and the CIA agent named Tim Thomas, who is teaching here for free, the CIA pays him to be on campus and pays the university to host him on campus. Why is it that we're experiencing an increased militarization here um, while other great programs like the Women's Center, the Disability Studies programs are getting cut next year? There, there are going to be at least six libraries closed. So for you graduates graduating, let your you know younger siblings know, let your friends know that they're not going to experience the same quality of education you're getting that you received these four or five years here at the UW. So please join us as we turn our backs today to Robert Gates. Um, and do the right thing. We're supposed to be a socially responsible university. We are supposed to, you know, receive a, a, an education that teaches us how to love others, to care for others, to care for the community. So do the right thing and turn your back. Thanks. You're either for legal war and you're against it. And when there's a war criminal speaking on your campus, you got to resist it. You got to stand up and say no. You got to turn your backs on him. Because this day just ain't about you! I'm against Robert Gates speaking at the University of Washington. This picture I have in my hand. Torture. War. The killing of one million civilians. And there's a war criminal speaking at this campus. I'm a master's student from the Jackson School. Um, I, I just wanted to say that I'm against Robert Gates speaking at the University of Washington. This man is responsible, this man is responsible for escalating a war in Afghanistan and Pakistan and continuing the surge in Iraq. This man does not represent what education is supposed to mean. The U.S. spends over $600 billion a year on, weapon, on, on, on military hardware. While meantime, in places like Detroit, places like New Orleans, everyday Americans are getting screwed because this country is more concerned about, you know, cashing in, about the oil in Iraq, about oppressing people and killing people in Pakistan and Afghanistan. So I just wanted to say, that as a UW graduating student, Robert Gates does not represent what this university should be and can be. In fact, he represents the worst of our society. He represents someone who wants to continue expanding U.S. power overseas. He uses words like democracy and freedom. That man does not know what democracy and freedom means. Look at how many CIA and FBI and UW police are here today. This is not what democracy looks like. This is what 
Um, this is anything but what democracy and freedom looks like. We just need to remember that, that that man is a hypocrite, and hopefully one day we're going to have other types of speakers there who represent a different, a freer, a real democratic vision of society. Right. And today, right. Robert Gates is not that.
apologize. They killed children in Afghanistan. And then they say they want to decrease civilian casualties. They released memos that document in detail that torture was hard graft from the highest levels of government. And then they refused to prosecute anybody that had anything to do with carrying out torture. Now people are thinking today what their lives are going to be about. And we are a generation that's coming into an era of open torture, of endless war. We're coming up in an era of a time when the U.S. is saying we're going to continue these wars for a legitimate empire. We're going to continue torture. An era where anti-abortionist activists are killing abortion doctors and birth control and abortion is the least accessible it's been since 1973. The question is posed with great urgency. We will, when we look back and see that the generations of this time acquiesced, when we look back and see that these generations accepted the carrying out of horrible crimes for the sake and privilege of being an American, will this continue on for years, perhaps decades, with new heights of destruction and inhumanity? People got to decide today, what are their lives going to be about? Because you guys got a war criminal who's speaking at your commencement ceremony. When we start thinking about humanity and what is good and what is required, not for me, above anybody else, but for the rest of the planet. Will we resist? We are here today to say bombing civilians, not in our name. We are here to say killing children, not in our name. We are here to say torture prisons, not in our name. We are here to say Secretary of Defense Robert Gates is a war criminal, not in our name.
Washington. This man is this man is responsible for escalating a war in Afghanistan and Pakistan and continuing the surge in Iraq. This man does not represent what education is supposed to mean. The U.S. spends over six hundred billion dollars a year on weapon on 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 military hardware. Well, meantime, in places like Detroit, places like New Orleans, everyday Americans are getting screwed because this country is more concerned about, you know, crashing in, about the oil in Iraq, about oppressing people and killing people in Pakistan and Afghanistan. So I just wanted to say, that as a UW graduating student, Robert Gates does not represent what this university should be and can be. In fact, he represents the worst of our society. He represents someone who wants to continue expanding U.S. power overseas. He uses words like democracy and freedom. That man does not know what democracy and freedom means. Look at how many CIA and FBI and UW police are here today. This is not what democracy looks like. This is what um, this is anything but what democracy and freedom looks like. We just need to remember that 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 man is a hypocrite. And hopefully one day we're going to have other types of speakers there who represent a different, a freer, a real democratic vision of society. And today, Robert Gates is not that. Celebrate graduation, not more war and occupation. Celebrate graduation, not more war and occupation. Celebrate. Graduation, not more war and occupation. My name is Vero Powell. I am an undergraduate graduating in the Jackson School of Political Science Department. I, like my colleagues here, my uh, fellow graduates, were uh, vehemently opposed to Robert Gates speaking here at the university commencement. We think it represents an increased militarization of our campus. Why is it that someone who has raised the military defense spending by 4% nationally is allowed to speak here at the university while public education is getting cut here at the university? There's going to be a 28% tuition hike for undergraduates over the next two years. Why is it that we people, we students, we ordinary workers from below are getting cut while there's increased military spending. We're, we're continuing the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the occupation in, in, in Palestine. This is very amoral. The University of Washington claims to be a very diverse place, claims to be open to students of color, but with this increased tuition heights, less students of color will afford and access this university. So this is morally uh, reprehensible. We are here to oppose that. We are here to oppose Robert Gates speaking here. Um, and the CIA agent named Tim Thomas, who is teaching here for free, the CIA pays him to be on campus and pays the university to host him on campus. Why is it that we're experiencing an increased militarization here um, while other great programs like the Women's Center, the Disability Studies programs are getting cut next year? There, there are going to be at least six libraries closed. So for you graduates graduating, let your you know younger siblings know, let your friends know that they're not going to experience the same quality of education you're getting that you received these four or five years here at the UW. So please join us as we turn our backs today to Robert Gates um, and do the right thing. We're supposed to be a socially responsible university. We are supposed to you know, receive a, a, an education that teaches us how to love others, to care for others, to care for the community. So do the right thing and turn your back. Thanks. I understand people are here. They've been working their whole lives towards the day. Or maybe your family member did. Your hopes, your dreams are all wrapped up in what you've done here at this university. Everything you've been working for, this is a culmination of that. But we have to look. This speaker today, the highest level of war criminal, what does he represent? And what about the lives, the hopes, the dreams, the aspirations of the people of Iraq? What about the wedding party that was bombed, the massacre that happened on May 4th this year? 140 people killed instantly in Afghanistan. What about the youth that were killed there? What about their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, which by this system count for nothing? We're told that the war in Afghanistan, the attacks on Pakistan, on Pakistan, those are the good wars. That's where we should be. But those were never wars for liberation. Those were never wars for the people of Afghanistan. In fact, the conditions for people there have gotten incredibly worse. The regime that the U.S. put in Afghanistan is robbing women of the right to go to school, to go to work without permission from their husbands. It's, it has granted men the right to rape women in marriage. This is the democracy 
that the U.S. is claiming that it is bringing to the Middle East. This is what it actually means, and we're talking about they are actually attacking and killing hundreds and thousands of civilians. Innocent people is a part of crushing whole peoples. What about their lives? What about their aspirations? What about their hopes and their dreams? What kind of system needs that? What are you going to be about when this world criminal, this person that's responsible for mass murder, for degradation, for the killing and massacre and the rape and pillage of whole peoples, for millions of people being thrown out of their homes, what are you going to do when he gets up and speaks? What call on people to turn their backs, to disrupt, to say you are not legitimate? People have been working their whole lives for the day, but what's being propagated here is not people's hopes, their dreams, but it's been saying that these wars for empire, these crimes, are the future that you should accept, that they are legitimate, and that this is the future you should unite with, and we should be vehemently against that. We need a movement of millions of people in this country to say that all of these wars, the wars in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Iraq, and everywhere else they go are illegitimate, they're wars of aggression, and we should repudiate that. We should be against everything that stands for, and this is a day to start. Turn your back on Robert Gates. Make clear he does not represent what you are about, what you think this world needs to be about, and we, you should also think about what really needs to be done through all this. What, I'm calling on people to build a revolutionary movement now. We need to get rid of this whole system that is based on exploitation and oppression and the need these kind of wars for its basic functioning. People should check out what's here in Revolution newspaper and take that up. Expose the crime of this system and where they come from and how we can do away with it. Check it out right now. Be a part of building this movement of resistance and this movement for revolution today. Thank you. Stop the U.S. war machine from Iraq to the Philippines. Stop the U.S. war machine from Iraq to the Philippines. Stop the U.S. war machine from Iraq to the Philippines. Stop the U.S. war machine from Iraq to the Philippines. Stop the U.S. war machine from Iraq to the Philippines. Now we need to talk about the importance, the crucial necessity of being out here of taking actions against the crimes of this government and against war criminals like Robert Gates. In the midst of the longest presidential election in history, we saw millions of people flood into political life with the hope that real change was coming, that the era of George W. Bush was over, and that all the crimes that had been committed were going to be washed away from a savior from the Democratic Party. Now the reality is that there is no motion to prosecute the Bush administration for war crimes or crimes against humanity. We have seen a collapse of the anti-war movement in the face of this rebranding of what this government does and whose interest it is acting in. The illusion that Barack Obama represents any fundamental change is deadly. He has escalated the war in Afghanistan, saying it is a good war. What is good about sending 21,000 more troops to the existing 38,000 already there? We have seen more concentrated killing of civilians in that country than during the entire time the Bush administration was in power. Less than a month ago, a U.S. air raid killed over 140 innocent civilians in the western province of Iraq. This administration has sent drones to Pakistan that have killed scores of other civilians. Barack Obama is expanding the torture state by securing executive power and doubling the size of Begram Detention Center in Afghanistan that has been used to detain and torture people throughout this war. And now most recently, he has refused to release thousands of photographs showing the U.S. government torturing and dehumanizing people, people and children, proving that torture, rape, and the forced submission of innocent people are not aberrations, but are necessary crimes in the expansion of U.S. empire. The war on terror has proven itself to be a war of terror on the people of the world, and this is the rubric in which the Bush administration and now the current administration has seduced the American people into going along with crimes against humanity. The narrative is being put out that now Obama is president, the U.S. is setting out to be a force of good in the world. This narrative is paralyzing people. It is within these parameters that the movement has turned its attention away from the crimes of this government and has refashioned its fight for what is good for the American people. There is no flag big enough 
continent. It's actually been repackaged and made more concentrated and actually expanded. So if you agree with that and you're opposed to this war, you're opposed to a, a war criminal speaking in your commencement, then you should take responsibility and wear an orange ribbon today for some kind of manifestation of your opposition to him. That's why we're out here today. Wedding parties. They had a happy day. They were excited about their day. And then the entire wedding party got blown away by a U.S. airstrike. So we have to be we have to be honest and real about what this country is doing to people here and around the world. And the fact that the person who's speaking today is actually a person of that empire. And he needs to be opposed. And to not do so means you're complicit. It means you're going along with it. And that's not right. So we're relying on people's conscience and their moral responsibility to go up against this unjust war and occupation, go up against the worship. I know it's uncomfortable, but that's when change happens when you do uncomfortable things. So we're calling on people to be brave and actually go up against the tide today. You know? <laughs> Try not to be a cookie cutter kind of person. Try to actually follow your conscience. Take up an orange ribbon. Take it out today and wear it. You're either for illegal war and you're against it. And when there's a war criminal speaking on your campus, you gotta resist it. You gotta stand up and say no. You gotta turn your backs on him. Cause this day just ain't about you. This day isn't just about Thank people you. celebrating so and having their own day. It's not about you. It's about the people of the world. Stop thinking like Americans and start thinking about humanity. This guy just said, thanks for ruining my right to graduation. Here's the thing. What about the graduation of Iraqi people? What about the graduations of people who have been killed in Pakistan? What about the graduation of people who have been tortured? People got to stop thinking about... People got to stop thinking, thinking like what's in the interest of humanity and start thinking like Americans. Because it's pretty simple. You're either for torture or you're against it. You're either for civilians being killed and bombed to bits in your name, or you're against it. And if you're against it, you got to take a stand today. It's not enough to just say, I don't like what's going on, I'm against it. You have a responsibility when a war criminal is speaking at your campus to actually resist. You have a responsibility to say no. Because I want to talk a little bit about what complicity is. I want to talk about what complicity is. Complicity is when you let crimes happen in your name. Complicity is when you allow things to go on and don't do anything to stop it. And when you have a war criminal coming to speak on your campus, you have a responsibility to actually stand up against it. You have a responsibility to confront what's going on. You have a responsibility to rebel against the status quo. We have to be prim, we have to be proper, we can't have our lives mean, mean about anything. You have to stand up. You have to have your lives stand for something. Because, let's be straight, what this day is about, people are looking at their futures. But what does the future look like now? We have endless wars for empire. This generation is stepping into an era of torture and definitely is attention. And it's on us. What kind of a future are we going to go for? What's this generation going to be about? Are we going to be letting war criminals come speak at our commencement and sitting politely and smiling and not saying anything? Or are we going to be part of resisting that? And they're like, well, why don't you just celebrate the graduation? Well, here's the deal. If you have a war criminal that's coming to your graduation to speak, a person who's personally responsible and an architect of mass murder that's being carried out in Iraq, Afghanistan, and even before that, then you got a responsibility to say something. And if you don't say something, then you aren't any different than those good Germans who sat there and watched their neighbors get dragged off to the ovens. You are no different. That's the reality. This is what's going on. Robert Gates is a central figure for this system. He's played a war in every single U.S. war of aggression since the 1980s. Going back to the secret wars the U.S. fought to arm the Contras in Nicaragua. Death squads in El Salvador in which they killed thousands and thousands of people. Backing up the government in Guatemala that, that murdered thousands of villagers in Guatemala. That's what this government has done and that's what Robert Gates has been a key figure of. 
People remember the Iran-Iraq war? One million people killed in the early 80s. Robert Gates was a key figure in helping fund both sides. So what the U.S. was doing was they were funding both sides so Iran and Iraq would kill each other off so what? The U.S. imperialists could sweep in and grab up that region. That's what they're part of. And that's what Gates is doing down to today. The surge in Afghanistan, 20,000 more troops sent in. I'm sorry, the surge in Iraq, 20,000 troops sent in with Robert Gates' as head as the Secretary of Defense. Well, what did that look like on the ground? What did it mean when the surge happened in Iraq? Here in this country, they tell us you should look at whether that surge worked or not. What does working mean? Working meant that they more systematically targeted the civilian population in Iraq and they killed more people off. That's what they really did. For what? Obama says that Iraq was a war of choice. That's what Obama said the other day at his speech in Cairo. The Iraq war was a war of choice. And that the people in Iraq are better off now than they were. That's your President Obama. What does that mean? One million people have been killed in Iraq as a result of this war. This is a war that was based on lies. That's a criminal war that targeted civilian populations that killed one million people, that, that forced four million people out of their homes. And this is what Barack Obama says is a war of choice. Not a criminal war, not an illegal war, not a war that people have a responsibility to oppose and to stand up against. And Robert, Robert Gates is, is one of the key leaders in this whole war. And you know what else? He's head of the military at a time that torture continues in Guantanamo Bay. There's people being tortured right now in Guantanamo Bay. No, it's not shut down under Obama. And on top of that, Obama is continuing the military commissions act. He's expanding the air base in Bagram, where they're also torturing people just like at Guantanamo. People got a responsibility to look at this. People cannot be complicit with this. What does it mean if you stand here and you're happy about your graduation, but you're not even thinking when the person who's speaking at your graduation goes back to his post at the Secretary of De Defense and figures out how to bomb more people in Afghanistan, where they target wedding parties? What if it was your wedding party? And what if you lived in Afghanistan? Do you know that the U.S. under Robert Gates and Obama and George Bush has a policy of targeting any gathering of people in Afghanistan as an, as an insurgent event. That means that they have systematically bombed wedding parties and killed dozens and dozens and dozens of people. Think about that. Think about what is your responsibility around that. Should by the fact that you were born in the United States or born in some other country and live in the United States, make it that you don't think about that? We've got to stop thinking like Americans and we've got to start thinking about humanity. What's the difference between whether you were born in the U.S., born in Iraq, born in Pakistan, born in Afghanistan, or any other country? Does that make you better? Yes. Because you were born in America? Yeah, that's the whole logic, right? And what is America like doing? Owners. What is America really doing to these countries? There's somebody going by shaking his head. Well, tell me this. What do you think about one million dead in Iraq? Oh, thumbs okay, up. this is a good lesson. Here's somebody with a military hat, goes by, you tell him one million dead in Iraq, and he gives the thumbs up. Do you agree with that? No! And if you, if you don't agree with it, then speak out against it. Then turn your back on Robert Gates. Stand up and say something. Join the protest here. Go forward from here, because people got a responsibility to speak out against these crimes. And here's the truth, we need a revolution to get rid of this system that's doing this. We need a revolution. This war that Barack Obama says is the good war. What's so good about the killing over a million people in Iraq? What's so good about doubling the size of Baker Detention Center in Afghanistan? has been used to detain and torture people throughout this war. And no one cares. We need to think about many people the fact care. that a war criminal care. is here today. We care. care. And you should not, too, or you're complicit. People are going to go get away with crimes against humanity, and people like Robert Gates are going to get away with torturing and murdering thousands of people. We need to stop and think about what that means, that a war criminal is allowed to walk freely around society. They are allowed on our campuses, where this is a place for education. This is not a place for war criminals. This mayor should be prosecuted. He has broken international law. 
to be fighting for. This picture I have in my hand. Torture. War. The killing of one million civilians. And there's a war criminal sticking at this campus. Oh, that has a lot of substance to it. Go to hell. I mean, that, that's just an example. Go to hell, I don't care. That's an example of the epitome of this country. Of arrogance and ignorance. And there's a group of people here today to say no. There are students that are graduating that are going to turn us back at Robert Gates. Because we have a responsibility. You aren't separate from this. Just like the good Germans weren't separate from Nazis dragging away Jews to concentration camps. It's not separate. This is a part of what you represent. This is what you stand for unless you oppose it. So people got to find out who is Robert Gates. What has he done in the world? People got to find out the fact that he's a war criminal, that he's been responsible for the killing of a million Yogis. Shut up, we're graduating. Oh, shut up, we're graduating. That's not, what about the graduations of the people in Iraq? You think your life is more important than other people's lives? Well, it's not. Wake up. Wake up. It's time to wake up because there are students that are here today that don't think that other people, that their lives are more important than other people's lives. Where are the graduation for the children that were killed in Iraq because of Robert Gates? Where's the ceremony and celebration for the people that are being tortured in Guantanamo, for the children that are there? There's a teenager that's being detained there who's been held there since he was 15 and now he's 20. He didn't get a graduation. So people got to confront what's real, what's going on. People got to understand the world, and this is a place. University is a place where you're supposed to critically think about the world. Where you come into engaging reality as it actually is. But what's the point of getting an education if you don't use it to serve the people? What's the point of getting an education if you're only out to get it out for yourself? There's a lot on this generation. There's a lot on the class that's graduating today. We are a generation coming into an era of endless war, of torture, we are a generation coming into being at a time when anti-abortion activists are killing abortion doctors and birth control of abortion has been the less successful that it's been since 1973. And to think that you don't have a role to play in opposing this is just untrue. Every generation makes its mark on the world. Every generation goes down as something. You have the generation that lay down in front of the Nazis and let their neighbors be dragged away into concentration camps. You have the generation in Vietnam that rose up on campus universities against racism. Where campus students actually raised up against the Vietnam War. Where veterans rebelled in the military. How will this generation go down? Because every generation leaves its mark on the world. Will our mark be that we were sitting silent as a criminal, somebody who killed civilians in Iraq, an illegal moral war, are we going to go down and sitting by and letting it go down and watching it and being quietly because we just want to enjoy our day? Or are we going to be in there turning our backs and saying we're going to go down and standing for something? We're going to go down as a generation that took the responsibility to stop all this. We're going to go down as a generation that refused to turn its head to what's going on. There's somebody who came up here today who said his daughter was graduating. And he came up here and he said, I want one of those orange ribbons. I want to take a stand about Robert Gates. I want to take a stand against Robert Gates. And he came up here and he got an orange ribbon. And he had moral clarity about what he was going to do today. He had moral clarity about what, it, what was he going to do as he they sees this war criminal up, up on stage. What is he going to do when he sees that there's somebody on stage that's been responsible for torture and deaths of civilians? People should think about that. People got to confront. What are you going to do when there is a war criminal, a mass mongering war criminal in your midst? Students at Stanford University, professor, students and alum and I stood up and did a banner drop against Condoleezza Rice. There is a movement of people that are not standing to the side. There is a movement of people that are not waiting it out. There's not a people who are saying, well, let's wait and see what Obama does. The people got to take responsibility to stop the crimes of their government. People got to know who Robert Gates is. Robert Gates was pivotal in the Iraq War, waging a 20,000
thousand troops surge into Iraq. This is a war crime by international law. Now people say, well, Robert Gates didn't initiate didn't initiate the war, he didn't open up Guantanamo, but guess what? International law makes no differentiation between those who initiate illegal war and torture and those who carry it out. Just the same way that we don't differentiate between Hitler and the Nazis that carry out Hitler's orders. So people gotta, gotta think about this. People gotta confront what kind of world are you living in? People gotta confront what is your government doing to people all over the world? Because if you don't confront that, you allow it to happen, and you're complicit in it, you won't have to with it. So maybe you think that you're separate from all these pictures. Maybe you think that, well, I don't really like that, I'm not for that, I just want to do fun. But unless you do something to stop it, unless you stand up against a war criminal that's in your midst, and you're going, you are going along with that. And what's the message that we want to send to the world today? What's the message we want to send to the people of Iraq when this guy who's been responsible for the deaths of millions of people goes to speak? What do we want to be remembered as? The whole world is watching today. Hey. Oh. like this? Emma? 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 9-11 was an inside job, man. we got to have 9-11 truth. If we had 9-11 truth, man, we wouldn't have to worry, we wouldn't have this debate about torture or what country we have to invade next. Because if you look at the evidence of 9-11, it points to government involvement. A brand new scientific article, peer-reviewed scientific international article, came out and said they found nanothermite in the dust and rubble of the World Trade Center. Nanothermite is a high-tech high military-grade explosive that can only get in Department of Defense laboratories. Department of Defense laboratories that Secretary Robert Gates runs. So Secretary Robert Gates knows the truth about 9-11. He's a hardcore war criminal involved in the Iran-Contra affair, head of the CIA for some time. What else is that? Bil Bilderberg Conference 2008 in Chantilly, Virginia, where he called for a war in Iran. The Euro Europe European faction of Bilderberg said they didn't want a war in Iran. Not because they're not a bunch of criminal warmongers, because they know it would take the world against them. They know that. Robert Gates is a total war criminal, wants to go into Iran, Pakistan, everywhere. The CIA just got caught. It's in all the mainstream news. You can look it up. Associated Press reported it. They're paying insurgents in Pakistan $150 per RFID chip that they throw into a house. That radio frequency chip can a predator, a predator, unmanned, predator drone, unmanned aircraft can find that that radio frequency and blew up the house. Some of the guys came public who were doing it and said, yeah, we didn't care, we just threw them in random houses. It's 150 bucks for every one they get. So they just throw them in random houses. Innocent women and children. CIA. So that's what Robert Gates is all about. Murdering innocent women and children. With the new evidence that just came out of nanothermite in the dust. Uh, yeah, we need a new investigation, so we got to hold these, uh, hold the new administration's feet to the fire. We know they're not going to investigate because Democrats and Republicans were both involved in 9-11. It's just an international job, but... Alright, they also got another uh, petition in New York City right now. It's a uh, citywide petition. They have over 40,000 signatures right now. They're trying to get a, um, a, a, city, a, city, a city investigation into 9-11 where they can um, form, form grand juries with subpoena power. Uh, I think they need 60,000 signatures. I'm not exactly sure, but they got 40,000 right now. So they're, they're going to need a little bit more help to get it on this year's ballot. So if you guys know anybody who lives in New York City, uh, any friends, relatives, tell them to get on the bill. I'm not sure what the, uh, I, think it's, I think it's called NYC 9-11 Initiative, I think is the name of it. Uh, that's going to be trying to get on the November ballot in New York City. So they got 40,000 signatures, so everybody support that. If you know anybody in New York City, get on that petition. All right, yeah, yeah, the website for that initiative is uh, NYC can, NYC C-A-N, it's NYC C-A-N dot org, check it out, try and get some more, uh, I think you can sign it online, if you're a city, of, uh, resident of New York City, you can sign it online as well, so, everybody get on that, NYC C-A-N dot org, they got the, uh, the new, the new article, it's an internationally peer-reviewed scientific article by uh, Stephen Jones and some other um, really highly respected uh, chemists and physicists from around the world. I think there's over 12 scientists that were in on the in on the peer-reviewed scientific article. Uh, the lead the lead author was a Danish scientist. He's, I forget his name right now, but it's published right now in the uh, Open Chemical Physics Journal. 
It's a new article. You can just go on any search engine and type in um, nan nanothermite found at WTC. Uh, it's brand new evidence that just came out. It uh, confirms that the buildings were a controlled demolition. This is 100% guarantee now. So we got scientific proof on our side. Uh, nanothermite is a very high-tech uh, military explosive that can only be acquired in um, highly regulated, classified uh, Department of Defense uh, laboratories. These laboratories are so secret you have to have the highest military clearance to get in. So we know we know now that there was government involvement. We always did, but now we got irrefutable proof: nanothermite detected in the World Trade Center dust. Everybody, check that out. Just, just, just type that into a search engine or check it out. It's in the uh, Open Chemical Physics Journal. It's a new, uh, internationally peer-reviewed scientific article. Uh, nanothermite, man, check it out. It's a very, very, uh, a lot of people don't know about it. It's a very classified substance. So NASA, NASA uses it for decoupling, uh, uh, re decoupling uh, space shuttles when they fly into space. So it's really high-tech NASA DOD uh, military explosive. So everybody check it out. Uh, brand new article just hit. It's all over the place. Yeah. 9-11 Truth.